Hey folks, this is a, another video in a series that aspires to teach fundamentals for beginners to Google's App Script. In the last video, we learned how to create an unbound App Script, how to organize our project files, and how to have input and output so that we can see stuff. We're going to resume by navigating to the Files map module and adding a new script file. We're going to title this B underscore concat underscore math and hit enter. We'll change the name of our function to concat capital M math and we'll hit save. We'll click on line two, hit enter once, add two slashes for a comment and hit space. We're going to be learning how to use the plus symbol so the plus symbol uh, can do uh, two different things dependent upon your use case. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to learn is using the plus symbol to concatenate strings. So we'll hit enter and tab. We're going to declare a variable. So we're going to use var and the variable name will be called first. We're going to set that equal to single quotes and we will say strings can. We hit the right arrow on our keyboard and we're going to add a semicolon. Now, as we've discussed, the way that you store alphabetical characters in App Script is in between quotation marks. So when we are using words, they are also known as strings. So we're going to be creating two variables that contain words which means we are working with two variables with the data type of string. We're going to hit enter and we're going to declare another variable called second. And we're going to set this equal to combined using the plus symbol. We're going to hit the right arrow on our keyboard and we're going to add a semicolon. We're going to hit enter twice, add two slashes for a comment, and then we will be adding some logging for transparency. We'll hit enter and tab, and we'll use capital L logger dot log with an open parenthesis. And we'll be using our first variable, which is called first. We'll add a space, we'll use the plus symbol, and we'll use a space. And then we'll use our second variable, which is also known as second. We'll hit the right arrow on our keyboard and add a semicolon. We're going to save our function and then we are going to hit run. Now you'll see in our execution log that we have concatenated our strings. So you can see that we have a literal representation of what we told the computer to do when we said log out the first variable plus the second variable. And we got those two directly next to one another. So you can see that our string in the first variable ends at can. So there is no space between can and the single quote. And our second variable has the same thing where combined comes directly after the single quote. And thus, when we combine them together, you can see that can combined appears hyper literally. So because we had two strings and we had a plus symbol, they are now joined together. Now, if you wanted to add um, a space in between these two variables, what I would recommend doing is doing it logically. So you don't want to change your variables because there might be instances where you're programming in a situation where you don't have the ability to change your variables in the source material. But you can do it on the back end by adding a single quote after your uh, plus uh, sign and adding a space in there. You can hit the right arrow on your keyboard and add a space and then add another plus sign. Now, when you run your code, you can see strings can combined using the plus symbol. Now, that doesn't read well grammatically. So if you wanted to continue to alter or transform, you could click in between the space, add another space, and then change the words around, right? So we're going to add in the word B, technically a string outside of our variables. So now when we hit run, you can see we have strings can be combined using the plus symbol. 
we're going to resume on line eight. We're going to hit enter twice, and we're going to hit the left arrow on our keyboard four times. We're going to add two slashes for a comment, and now we're going to learn how to use the plus symbol to do math. We're going to hit enter and tab. We're going to declare a variable of a, and that will be set to five. Now you'll notice that five does not have single or double quotes around it, and that's because it's a number. When you're entering in a number within app script, you do not have uh, quotation marks around it. You just enter in the number as it is. I'm going to add a semicolon after it. I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to declare a variable of b, which will be set to 10. I'm going to add semicolon after that as well. We're going to hit enter twice. We're going to add two slashes for a comment, and now we'll be doing some logging for transparency. We're going to hit enter and tab. We're going to use logger dot log open parentheses in order to do a space plus space b. I'm going to hit the right arrow on my keyboard. I'm going to add a semicolon. I'm going to hit save and we're going to run it. Now you can see when we uh, run our math, or when we use the plus symbol with numbers, we're getting a math operation where we have combined 5 to 10 which is what we would expect when we're using the plus symbol in other environments like a spreadsheet or a calculator. So the plus symbol has two primary use cases, which is the ability to concatenate strings and the ability to add uh, numbers together. Now, if you have a circumstance where your number is formatted as a string, such as this five here, let's say that it had single quotes around it, you'll notice that when we run our function again, we are no longer getting 5 plus 10, we are getting 5 concatenated with 10. So we are now getting the string of 5 plus 10. So anytime that you have a string with numbers, it will then convert the numbers to be formatted as strings. So this number 10 no longer is an integer once we do logger plus, uh, when we use this logger statement here. Now it's not altering variable B, but in the context of A plus B, it is not doing the number five plus the number 10, it is doing a string five concatenated with 10. And thus the 10 has now been converted into a string. Now there are gonna be some instances where you can so like in this instance here, I could just delete the single quotes if I wanted to. But there might be some other instances where you're working with a data set that has been polluted because there are numbers entered in there. So an example that I've come into contact with is if I'm extracting data from a spreadsheet, typically I'm working in Python for this. I don't really come across this problem with App Script uh, because it's pretty good at uh, interpreting the values coming out of Google Sheets. But I might have a situation where people are maintaining a spreadsheet that they want to use in an application, and they will have a column with numbers, um, but they might not have numbers. So instead of leaving blanks or adding a zero, they'll enter in NA for not applicable or NA for not available, and that will inadvertently convert all the other numbers in the column to be strings. So in that case, I don't have the ability to go in there and clean up all of the data uh, in the sheet. What I might do, though, is I might uh, clean the data in App Script. So in this case, we have a string of 5 set to A. So instead of changing variable A, we can modify it in our logger by using capital N number and wrapping A in parentheses. So even though it's uh, formatted as a string in the code, when we log it out wrapped in the number function, it will transform the type from string to number so that then we are able to do uh, a uh, 5 plus 10 as we had originally intended. I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like to continue following this series, there's a playlist linked in the description.